Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In recent videos I've introduced lunar landers of various kinds, the ILV, the Dynetics, and the Starship Lunar Lander, and also components of the Lunar Gateway, but we don't have any base modules. Now there are mods that have very good base modules available like USI or Planetary Base Inc, but I would be negligent in not creating some of my own, and I have some ideas that are somewhat different from what has been produced before, but that does bring up an interesting problem. How the heck do we deliver lunar base modules to the surface of the moon? I don't even know how NASA plans to deliver lunar base modules to the surface of the moon, or if they plan to. Um, it's a good question. The Dynetics lander could be modified if you make it larger. Uh, the, the little central core bit uh, could possibly be a good base module, and then the structure on the outside could be flexible in that sort of case but in in YouTube videos of lore some of you may remember this in fact it may be a good you know sort of uh, I don't know what you might call it uh, test case for how long people have been watching the channel if they recognize what I am about to reveal and you will be able to tell already from the video name among other things as well as the title there but some of you may may recall the orange, and I have decided to make my own model of the orange. Previously it was made with procedural parts, but now we have a blender modeled orange. So how this came to be was I was playing around, I needed a sort of sky crane thing to land base modules on the moon in stock, but well, it's not, it wasn't stock, it was like co the colonization series, so it had mods in, it was just, just a stock system. And uh, so I have procedural parts, and one of the textures is cryogenic orange. And I decided to make a little uh, sky crane kind of lander using that orange texture in the shape of a mandarin orange. And that worked pretty well. Uh, it took some refinement. Eventually I made a pumpkin, which had solar panels on the side in the form of teeth. It was around Halloween. And so it was an orange with you know, eyes and teeth as uh, you make made out of solar panels. And all of the oranges had the same feature. Uh, the lander engines were on pistons and uh, hin uh, I don't know if they were hinges. I think it was just straight pistons uh, from Inferno Robotics. And uh, RCS ports were on the outside here. There's a docking port on top, docking port at the bottom. And yeah, so I have formalized it in the form of this orange. Now, trying to decide why you would have something be orange in the first place um, is a good question. Cryogenic orange is one thing. I mean, that's for surface launchers, right, like Delta. Uh, in space, well, I decided that the foil could be sort of an orange color instead of the usual gold. There's no problem with that. Uh, you can get the stuff in various colors. So we've got, we've got our insulation as as an orange foil and we've got soul panel on one side or on the other side and of course we have the extendable pistons except now it's not infernal robotics it's just built into a single model of course the docking ports are not built into this model so rcs thrusters main thrusters for landing uh, they provide 15 kilonewtons each they do not gimbal uh, the rcs thrusters will have to handle that part of it and yeah Altogether, it was made to fit into a 5 meter fairing. Uh, we are not launching it within a 5 meter fairing. This is New Glenn with a 7 meter fairing, but that's because of New Glenn's capacity to the moon. If we were just sending the orange to the moon, we could do it on a Vulcan rocket uh, with all the boosters. But if we want to send orange with a base module that it'll land on the moon both at the same time we need new glenn or higher but i want to test whether it can actually do uh what i wanted to do i really wanted to do a larger base module but we're going with seven tons so there's a seven ton mass i wanted it in the size of the kind of base that i want so it's a four meter diameter by eight meter length is the goal and our mass goal is about seven tons for that kind of size, and I think that's reasonable. And we will see whether the orange can handle that and also recover it in recover itself into low lunar orbit because that was the goal of the orange. It was not only supposed to drop the 
uh, base module off, it was supposed to get back into orbit afterwards. So that's tough. Uh, so it's, right now it's configured to methane and oxygen. It's the, I think it's the, I've, the, <laughs> the volumes are actually, it's deceptive. The outer tank is very thin. So I think its volume is less than the volume of the inner tank. So the inner tank is the oxygen one and the outer tank is the methane one. And that is how it is. So yeah, it's all methane oxygen thrusters. I tried to make the RCS and uh, main thrusters configurable so that they could change fuels. But it turns out that you can't do it both the RCS and the main thrusters like that on the same model. So it gets confused about changing the fuel for the RCS and changing the fuel for the engines. Uh, they, they get mixed up. So uh, we can't have two engine configuration modules on the same part, in other words. So I decided to skip that and we'll just do different models of the orange for different fuel combinations. So if we want storable ones like MMH and Mon3 or something like that, we'll just have a different orange. <laughs> Uh, okay, so I will be making base modules because like I said, I have a different idea of how those should be done and Yeah, we are going to launch this to the moon and see if it can do handle the seven tons Okay, so here we are. It's a uh, very bright shiny part of the day and we're lined up with the moon and SAS on throttle is up and ignition And launch so off we go uh, so the capacity to the moon that we need out of our launcher is about 18 tons and hopefully New Glenn will do that and still reserve enough for a barge landing got these at 2600 kilonewtons their ISP is uh, less Actually, it's only 306 right now seconds, much less than Raptor because Raptor has that full flow staged combustion thing going on. Again, I do try to pick the, the lightest launcher that I can to do the job. Now, the orange will eventually go in my experimental pack, but I'll link it in the video description, assuming things work. I'll offer it to you guys. Uh, as a standalone for now until I get the experimental pack ready that's a lot of okay I think we'll shut down there so that's reserved for barge landing and now the two BE3U's and check that those are the fairings yep fairings up so the orange will have to reposition itself to this docking port here because that's how it'll land the base module. The real base module will of course have landing legs. There is the matter of capturing around the moon though. I haven't really hmm, budgeted for that properly. Okay, yeah, this says this doesn't even have enough to get over there properly. So we are going to reconfigure this and we're going to have to expand the first stage and see if that does something better. Okay, once more, but with all the fuel. SAS on, throttle is up, and ignition. And launch. Okay, we're past the speed of sound and this is just for reference as far as where we are. We're taking a shallower trajectory than last time. Might want to have that out. Okay, well, separation. And ignition. It's a weird roll going on there. Okay. And fairings. And throttle up. And that's orbit, 237 by 201. And that's a pretty good inclination with the moon, so let's plot to get there. In fact, maybe we could just keep burning right now. 
Um, let's say we have it over here. We don't need to get there in a hurry after all. Yeah, we could probably just keep burning. And ignition. All right, off we go. And shut down. Okay, 1.3 off there. Uh, well, interesting things are happening at the moon. That looks like our initial, oops. Okay, so we're a little bit too far. Let me go retrograde. We have to watch out for the hydrazine though. We don't have an infinite amount. Okay, well, I think we're okay on the hydrazine budget, even though I made this correction with it. Oop, went too far. Uh, shoot. Uh, well, we'll fix that when we get there. Anyway, I'll time warp in the tracking station to avoid boil off. Uh, that's just because I accidentally left off the MI layers on the orange. Okay, had an odd effect where the thrusters seemed to be thrusting there, but they turned off. I don't know what that's about. It might have something to do with having a solar panel and the engine module on the same part. I've had weird things happen with plumes when that when I did that, but I'm not sure. So that's just for future reference for other people who might be using the part. So we've got a little bit of a problem entering lunar SOI here. We need to raise our periapsis, but not use too much hydrazine in doing so. So let me carefully try and turn to the right vector without using too much. A uh, brief ignition of the main engines might be warranted. Okay, well, that's a pretty high periapsis, but I'll take it. It's better than crashing into the moon. Alright, on to the moon. Okay, so our capture location is on the dark side of the moon. And, well, the currently dark side of the moon. I mean, the dark side of the moon doesn't imply that the dark side of the moon is always dark. It just happens to be dark right now. Anyway, uh, so that's good because our landing spot's probably going to be in daylight then. Okay, so let's get a little bit closer. And I think I'll let it naturally rotate me to retrograde for the burn. Yeah, I think that's going to be possible. Don't have a clear location on the moon, but anyway, here we go. Ignition. Very quick burn. Mm, can we get. Oh, let's use that nine meters per second. Okay. That's pretty good. Just right. I mean. Sort of a high apoapsis, but otherwise just right. And look at that periapsis, right where we want it, basically. So, all right. Well, with that, we're going to have to have the orange maneuver. Let me turn off the RCS right now. We'll want it to kill rotate. We want to do this in daylight. And we want it to still have enough hydrazine to kill rotation while I do this. So the port's right there. Okay, so... Kill rotation, smart ASS. Okay, and the orange is gonna let go. And we are going to activate the RCS on orange. Okay, well, anyway, the thrusters are definitely working. Extending. Good. Rotating. We are recharging with the solar panels. The solar panels are facing the sun directly and it's recharging properly. Okay, we are connected. We're going to decouple. 
and control from here now and forward okay so that part's dealt with now we can probably go directly into the landing sequence so or re retrograde and activating the main engines now these have a uh, total of lots of ignitions uh, in theory where are they mm, oh I guess maybe uh, oh yeah it's possible without hmm <laughs> without module engine configuration I don't know if I can reset the number of ignitions I'll have to work on that okay uh, so it's actually infinite ignition at this point but you know it's meant to be reusable I was gonna set it to something like 400 anyway so sort of academic anyway 18.293 tons we might have to make it a little bit lighter or if we want to continue using New Glenn, but probably I'm just gonna launch the base module and the orange separately next time and use either Vulcan or New Glenn. Okay, so first of all, let's ignition. Now, apologies for the non methalox plume, but that is because um, I had a glitch with the real plumes, so I just stuck to my usual tug plumes. And the glitch was just the thrusters constantly firing. So... Uh, seeming to fire. They didn't actually consume fuel, they didn't produce thrust, it's just the effect was there, so... Now if you want to return the orange to orbit, you're gonna have to be careful with it. And I'm gonna have to be careful with it. The engines do throttle to 20%. Okay, that should be good enough. I want to aim for landing in this sea. I think I've got the textures fixed now. I think so. So maximum thrust 64 kilonewtons. It's 16 on each of the thrusters. Um, I could have rotated a little bit better. That one's sort of blasting the thing. I don't know why the suicide burn countdown is still going down. That seems odd to me. We can control that by a little pitch though. Now trying to get all the base modules into the same place is going to be a pain and maybe some oranges will have to be sacrificed in the course of that. Okay, coming out of fizz warp. I have no idea whether we'll have enough fuel to get the orange back, but I'm gonna get that. Uh, uh, that's not the side we need to decouple, it looks like, this one. Get that ready. Go to SAS. Ooh. He's a little imbalanced on my own here. possible I didn't put the docking port on the base module simulator quite correctly. Whoa, uh, it's weird. Feels weird. It's like, I think maybe one of the thruster ports is being blocked actually. It feels like that. Okay, so at idle, we can descend. That's good, that's important to me. Okay. Uh, so... Undock and go. Okay, so prograde. Yeah, we have enough. We have some margin actually. 
which will be good for trying to deliver them to the exact location. So seven tons down. Yeah, I think the docking board was just not placed exactly at the center of the module. Well, that's probably, and maybe because of the way we were rotated, it wasn't quite, uh, some of the thrust was getting blocked. I don't know. I guess we should have gone retrograde instead, but anyway. Okay, at this point I think I'll coast a bit. There is a sort of ignition delay, so watch out for that if you're actually trying to use this. Or you may smack into the terrain. Okay, all right, all right. All right, I control that orbit a little bit. 115 by 57 with 900 meters per second left. It might have been able to make orbit around the moon on its own. And you can see vessel mass 1.755. Uh, basically, it's got uh, 1.362 ton dry mass. And I measured its, um, which got the surface area of all the parts basically, and assumed everything was four millimeters thick. <laughs> I, I, it was a little bit simple, but ultimately it got good results. We've got 1.362 ton dry mass, and it's a little over, a little over 10 tons fully fueled. So it's a reasonable fraction considering it's uh, fuel tanks, uh, you know, a control core, uh, some batteries, radiator here, solar panel there, and these tiny little thrusters on pistons. So, yep. And these propellant only docking ports, of course, which are not mine. So anyway, that is the part. And we can retract these still. And so I find it very convenient and hopefully it will lead us to do great things. But anyway, with that, the return of the orange, folks. I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.